Hey there, Vince here, and welcome to another Circuit Rewind Quick Bug Report. And today, well, I'm getting ready for PDX LAN coming up soon, and what I do every PDX LAN is I go through my rigs and go and clean them out, fix them up, and uh, today I wanted to go one step further and actually repaste the CPU to make sure it's nice and fresh, and I can tell that I did an imperfect job last time. So uh, let's go through and do that, but I'm going to give you a challenge. If I use a technique today that you did not know about before, you got to give this video a thumbs up, all right? That, that's the deal here, because I'm going to do something you've probably never seen before for the way that I do my uh, repasting. To get this process started a little bit quicker, I've already taken apart the case. I've already pulled off the heat sink. You can see all the goopy goop of the old thermal paste. I'm going to wipe all that down, and uh, let's get to it. Let's change this camera angle. Standard disclaimers apply. Anything that I'm doing right now, if you want to do this yourself, do it at your own risk. If you do any of these tech... If you use any of these tools or any of these techniques incorrectly, that's on you, not on me. Uh, all I'm doing is showing you how I clean my CPUs and get rid of thermal paste. However you do it is on you and not on me, so if you break it, sorry. All right, so first up, I'm gonna work with this uh, heat sink here and get this all cleaned up. First thing I'm gonna do, some isopropyl alcohol, and I'm just gonna dab real quick on some paper towels and just wipe off the big chunky stuff, right? So I'm gonna do that one more time. Give me another bit of alcohol here. Just get that cleaned up nice and good. And that's usually what people do to clean these things, right? Many, many moons ago, I came up with another idea. Why don't I take something sticky and see if I can get that to stick? So I've got some, just some packing tape here, and I'm gonna just take off a chunk of it. And let's just apply it. Get that nice and good on there and rip it off. And from there, it has an imprint of the heat sink on it. And then I just go down the line and just do this repeatedly over and over and over again. Each time I do this, it picks up a little bit more of the very, very small particulates of the remaining compound that's on this heat sink. And I'll do the same thing for the processor too. You can also hear that each time I do this, it sticks a little bit better than the last time as it's getting closer and closer to the metal, but there's still that very thin layer that's on the, uh, the metal there, or between the metal and the, uh, the tape. And what's nice about this type of tape and doing it using this method is the tape does not leave, at least this tape, does not leave any sticky residue at all. And like I said, when you, you get it in there all nice and good, kind of see that right there, you can actually see the imprint of the heat sink on the tape. And I'll just do this a few more times until it's nice and clean like alternating directions from time to time. So yeah, just getting this in here and just really working it in with, uh, with my nail, my thumbnail here. And I just repeat this process over and over again until this thing is nice and actually clean. It's just, there's still a lot of leftover crud that doesn't get uh, picked up by the isopropyl. And this does a really nice job of cleaning it up and making it really shine. Now let's do the processor. I'm gonna do the, the same basic process. Got my isopropyl. Gonna get a, you know, a paper towel here nice and wet. Just use this to scrape up as much as I can. And what's nice about the processor is it is a much, much flatter surface. So this is a little bit easier on this one but I'm not gonna lift it out of the socket, so you'll have to suffer with a camera angle that's not ideal. All right, let's do one more round of the isopropyl. And see right now, that looks nice and clean and shiny, right? You can clearly see the text, you can see nice good reflections on the text, but I'm gonna go through and do a round of this anyway. So just place it in there get it across the entire chip. And if it bubbles up a little bit, if the tape bubbles, it's fine because um, I do this multiple rounds anyway. As long as we get most of it. And just like that, uh, you can actually see the rise in text uh, in this one if you look really, really closely. And I'm gonna just go do this a couple more times. 
and get all that remaining crud on the processor. And like I said, if it bubbles up or doesn't go on exactly evenly each time, it's fine because I'm gonna do multiple passes of this anyway. And each time I move the tape down just a little bit further to get away from the last one that I did. And you'll be able to see it on the tape. Like you'll, you'll be able to see all the crud on the tape. Now let's just go get one more piece, do this a couple more times and call this one good. Listen to that nice crisp sound as I pull up the tape. Like pretty much almost all of the gunk is now removed from this chip. Like I'm not seeing any imprints of the, uh, the chip anymore on the tape, which is exactly what you want. You want just a nice, good, clean application and pull up where there's basically nothing. All right, I need to go get an actual cutting tool real quick. Well, I thought I was just gonna show you this real quick, but it turns out they use that old school type of clamshell packaging that you need to like literally take a knife or scissors to to get into it. And I was not prepared for that. I don't remember the last one being like this. Now that I've thoroughly destroyed the packaging, I can continue with the video. All right, so next up, I, I, uh, I lied a little bit. I'm not actually going to be repasting this chip. I have since come into love with these, uh, these thermal pads. Uh, these are phase change material pads. And uh, basically you, you put it, um, it, it's a replacement for thermal paste. So they go on, they are nice and thin. They're designed to go between the CPU and the heatsink. So you just put it on like so, put the heatsink on, screw that down. And then as temperature goes up, it will convert itself to a liquid uh, and allow the thermal transfer. And then as it cools back down, it'll re go back into the, the form of the sheet that it's in and they are completely reusable. So you can take the heat sink off, do whatever maintenance you need, put the heat sink back on with no more goop in the future ever again. Um, they're really freaking awesome and that's what I'm using in all my rigs now. And that's actually why I wanted to take this one apart so I could just go do that once and be done with this forever. So I guess, I have to finish putting this computer back together now, and I've got a little bit of a mess to clean up here, but it's not too bad. It'll only take me like 10 minutes or whatever. But I have a freshly pasted CPU now, and I um, hope that gave you some ideas of uh, how to do a little extra cleaning on your CPU and maybe even upgrading to a new type of thermal uh, compound. And I already know the main question I'm gonna get with this video. How do these thermal pads compare to thermal paste in terms of their thermal conductivity. I did not benchmark this ahead of time. I'm not gonna benchmark this afterwards. This is a fractal node 202. This is an RTX 3080. This case here, thermal throttles. Just straight up, I, anybody in the ITX space probably knows this problem. When you throw a lot of high-end components into a very compact case with very little airflow, uh, you thermal throttle no matter what. Uh, the CPU performance from my early testing otherwise that I've done, just casually looking at it, not really scientific, performance is the same. Like, it's within a couple percent. It's not enough for me to notice or care. Um, the other thing is, like, this case in particular, um, I'll just flat out say it's a bad design, but uh, Fractal has come out and produced a newer case that actually has proper airflow. This one did not. It, it was terrible. Uh, if I would have known that when I built it, I wouldn't have bought it. Um, but I am interested in Fractal's newer case. I don't know the model number offhand, so uh, maybe I'll put it on the screen there. But um, anyways, uh, this is upgraded. I uh, hope you like this. And uh, until next time, later, y'all. Wow, do I really need to say anything about this packaging, how terrible it was?